Hi, home video makers. Maybe you've heard about the Ken Burns effect, which is a type of panning and zooming effect used in film and video production that was a post-production technique used by Ken Burns, an American filmmaker, and his name has become associated with this effect. This technique of panning and zooming adds the illusion of movement to still images in motion pictures. Of course, this can also be used in video clips. This technique can easily be done in Magic's Movie Studio and Video Pro X by using the camera zoom shot effect. Because this effect does panning and zooming, it uses the size position effect. In fact, the camera zoom shot effect is just a front end or easy way to modify the zoom factor and positioning on an image that you can also do manually using the size position effect. Before starting, I highly recommend that you watch my tutorials on using the size position rotation effect and on keyframing, as those techniques are what you're going to see in this tutorial and I will not be explaining them in any great detail. I'm using Video Pro X16 for this tutorial, set up to replicate what you see in Movie Studio 2025 Platinum and Suite. My project is set up for full HD, that is, a resolution of 1920 wide by 1080 high, or an aspect ratio of 16 to 9. Since we're going to be zooming in, you'll want to use higher resolution images and videos than your project resolution. Otherwise, you'll be losing resolution as you zoom in. I have a photo on the timeline that has a resolution of 3264 by 1836 pixels and the same 16 to 9 aspect ratio as my project. Thus, the image fills the screen completely. Since we'll be animating over time, the image or clip selected should be greater than 4 seconds long. We'll see why later. The photo on the screen is 6 seconds long. With the photo selected, go to the Effects tab under View Animation, Camera Zoom Shot. At the upper right is a hamburger menu with a list of things starting with Load Video Effects save video effects, etc. This is standard for all effects. To its right is an X that can be used to quickly reset the effect. To start with, we're going to use just a simple zoom. No pan, no movement. This is the quickest and easiest way to zoom in on an image or video clip. In my tutorials on size position rotation, you'll see that I use the width and or the height values to zoom in or I zoom out of the preview monitor and use the handles to zoom in and position the image. Camera zoom shot is much simpler. First, let's look at the interface. Near the top right is a button that says Preview. This toggles between Preview and Edit Modes. When it shows Preview, that means that we're in Edit Mode, and you press on Preview to see the preview, then Edit to get back into Edit Mode. This is important as you don't want to be trying to edit in preview mode. At the top left, there's direction of movement and there are arrows in various directions. These will pan in the direction shown vertically, horizontally, or diagonally. Below that, besides zoom, are buttons for from section and to section. Then section with a button that says movie size. At the bottom is duration with a selection of over full duration, 2 second edge, 30% in the center, and custom. We'll start with over full duration. Now, look at the preview monitor. Since we're in edit mode, there's a dashed rectangle around the image with handles in the corners and midpoints for resizing the rectangle. This rectangle is the section that is referred to in this effect. Whatever is in the rectangle or section is what we are zooming into. Before doing anything, I'll click on Custom. I'll resize the rectangle and move it over the rabbit. Now click on Preview and voila, we see what was in the rectangle full screen. We have quickly and easily zoomed in. Back to Edit Mode and I'll move the rectangle over the turtle and change the size. Click on Preview and we have a different zoom. Moving along the timeline, nothing changes. We just have a static zoomed in image. Back to edit mode. Look at the keyframe area. The size position rotation effect has been added and a keyframe is placed on the keyframe timeline. As I said, 
you should be familiar with the size position rotation effect and keyframing. This keyframe contains the size and position values at that point. Since there is only one keyframe, the entire object has the same effect values over its duration. Even if I move the keyframe and move along the timeline, the zoom never changes. Now, I'll switch to the size position rotation effect and change the width from pixels to percent. This is the zoom factor and we see that I have zoomed in to about 437%. I can change the values, like decrease the numbers to zoom out, then move the image. If I wanted a different zoomed area, I have to move the image around and play with the values. So you can see that using the camera zoom shot is a lot easier than zooming using the size position rotation effect. Back to camera zoom shot. The rectangle is now in the same location as what was showing in the size position rotation effect. I can quickly reposition the rectangle to wherever I want, which changes the coordinates under size position rotation. So that is really the very basic use of camera zoom shot. Create a simple static zoom on an image or video clip. Now on to using the effect for a simple pan on a zoomed in image. I'll reset what we had and click on the box beside over full duration. For the first effect, I'll ignore the rectangle and just click on the downwards arrow. Immediately, keyframes are placed at the beginning and the end of the keyframing timeline beside the size position rotation effect. Note that the rectangle got a bit smaller in order to be able to do the effect. Normally, you'll select an area for the zoom by making the rectangle smaller yourself. Click on Preview and play it back. A slightly zoomed in image pans from top to bottom. Click on Edit. Look at the rectangle in the preview monitor. It's not full screen. At the beginning of the photo, the rectangle is showing what will be zoomed in at the start. As I move along the timeline, the rectangle moves downwards to the bottom at the end of the photo. This is the second basic use of camera zoom shot, zooming and panning. In this case, it starts with a zoom size of the rectangular section and then animates by panning. There's no change to the zoom factor. I'll click on the diagonal arrow to make the pan go to the bottom right. As I scroll along the timeline, the rectangle goes from the upper left to the bottom right. Click on Preview and play this back to see what happens. Back to Edit Mode. So, the other direction arrows will do the same thing. Zoom in, then pan in the direction selected. I'll reset the effect. Rather than the default size of the rectangle for the starting zoom, I'll make the rectangle smaller by dragging the bottom right handle inwards and move the rectangle to the upper left. Click on the direction arrow for diagonal to the bottom right. Preview, and we see that the image is zoomed in to the size of the rectangle, and as we play back, the image is panned towards the bottom right. Back to edit mode, and I'll scrub along the timeline, and you can see the rectangle move from the top left to the bottom right. If I click on the direction bottom left diagonal arrow and play back, still in edit mode, we see that the rectangle moves from the top left to the bottom left. I'll change the location of the rectangle by moving it to the right and down a bit from the top. Click on the down arrow, move along the timeline, and the rectangle moves from the start location downwards to the same distance from the bottom as the starting distance from the top. Change to Preview and play this back. Back to Edit. Try these different direction arrows and starting rectangle or section sizes and locations yourself. I'll reset the effect and move the playback marker to the beginning of the image. Now we're going to use the From and To zoom buttons. These buttons mean that the zoom and pan will start or finish with a full image and zoom to or from the rectangle or section size and position that you select. This will give us the Ken Burns effect. I'll resize the rectangle to be over the rabbit. Click on From Section. This means that I want to start with a section that the rectangle is covering zoomed in, then zoom out to the full image. 
Look at the keyframe timeline. There are now keyframes at the beginning and end of the object. Preview and play it back and we see that the image starts zoomed in and goes to the fully unzoomed image. Back to edit mode and move the playback marker to the beginning of the object. Now click on to section. Preview this and we see that the image starts full screen and zooms into the section of the rectangle. Back to edit mode and as I move along the timeline you can see that the rectangle starts full image and gets smaller as it moves over the rabbit. To see the values of the keyframes go to the size position rotation effect. Go to the first keyframe and we see the values for the starting width and height 1920 by 1080 and the original position of 0. Go to the second keyframe and we see the values for the width, height, and horizontal and vertical size and position of the rectangle as selected in the camera zoom shot effect. Back to camera zoom shot. Click on from section. Preview this and we see that the image starts zoomed in to the section of the rectangle and goes to the full unzoomed image. To see the values of the keyframes, go to the size position rotation effect. Go to the first keyframe and we see the values for the width, height, and horizontal and vertical size and position of the selected rectangle. Go to the second keyframe and we see the original size, 1920 by 1080, and the position is zero, fully centered. Back to camera zoom shot. Now we have the image zooming in and panning over the entire duration of the object. We can see this as the keyframes are at the start and end of the object duration. Click on 2 second edge. Immediately we see that the keyframes have moved. The first one is 2 seconds from the beginning, the second at 2 seconds from the end. Remember that I said that the object should be more than 4 seconds? Well, to place these two keyframes, we need at least four seconds. I've lost my rectangle over the rabbit, so I'll resize it and move it. This often happens if you change some of the parameters. Preview and play back. Since we had last clicked on From Section, playing back, we see that the image starts zoomed in. Then at two seconds, starts zooming out until the next keyframe, where it's fully zoomed out. That is, the effect starts changing at the first keyframe and stops changing at the second keyframe. Click on 30% in center. The keyframes move slightly. The distance or duration between the keyframes will now be 30% of the duration of the object. Since the object is 6 seconds, the duration between keyframes should be 1.8 seconds, or in my case, 1 second, 24 frames. So, you have some quick and easy ways to adjust the locations of the keyframes. Of course, you can always drag a keyframe left or right to change the duration of the animation. Let's now look at the Movie Size button. I'll reset the effect. Note that the section rectangle is full screen. Click on Movie Size and the rectangle changes size. It gets smaller. This is because the resolution of the image, 3264 by 1386, is greater than the resolution of the movie, which is 1920 by 1080. The rectangle is showing a part of the image that is 1920 pixels wide by 1080 high. This is the maximum that we can zoom in before we start to lose resolution. To see this, I'll select a video clip that was filmed at 1920 by 1080. Click on Movie Size and nothing happens. The rectangle is at the full image. This means that any zooming in will cause a loss of resolution. It's up to you if you want to zoom in more. Like me, usually you do, and you can live with a loss of some resolution. The last duration is custom. Use this for creating multiple zooms and pans on an image like that playing on the screen. Note the multiple keyframes in the keyframe area. If you want to see how to do this, watch the separate custom camera zoom shot example. The link should be at the top of the screen and in the description. There's a slight problem in using camera zoom shot. 
Before exporting, make sure to deselect any object that has the effect open, otherwise the effect will not show up in the exported file. In any event, it's always good practice to deselect objects by clicking in a blank area of the timeline. You may have noticed that each animation starts and stops rather abruptly. To smooth this out, click on the Interpolation button to switch to Automatic Bezier Interpolation, or rather, a smooth curve with acceleration and deceleration. One final note, as I said, you can use the effect on video clips as well. Try out everything that I mentioned to better understand how the effect works. That's it for Camera Zoom Shot Effect. I hope that this has helped you understand an easy way to zoom and pan on images and video clips. Thank you for watching. Till next time, make movies.